coming down praise god how's everybody doing today hope you're doing fine and we're gonna go to a special program today and that's gonna be one hour long man if you ever thought that half hour was good wait until we listen to this one one hour special for you this week and next week uh so make sure you find out through facebook Uh, what times are they going to be playing? By, because it might not be at noon or it might not be at 7 p.m. So uh, look for uh, our advertising at revivalhour.ca on Facebook. Please follow us there. That's the place you got to be so we can have all the announcements. And don't forget, this coming Sunday, uh, we're going to uh, be teaching from the Word of God an amazing how we can be a better people for others and for God. So you don't want to miss that. And then uh, the uh, trip to Israel, February the 16th to the 20th. Um, you don't want to miss that one, too. We have the brochures here. Please email us, and we'll send you the um, the uh, brochure. And uh, because we still have some time in October, we'll be having uh, an Israeli night. So we'll be able to talk about all of this. So uh, anyway, enjoy the program. And this is one hour special. And then at the end, I'm going to come and um, give you the last words. And I believe that you're going to need to hear this. So God bless you. Enjoy it. Bye for now. I love this song. I love this song. It says, when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Isn't it wonderful? Thank God that we have a heaven. Amen. We'll have a new heaven. We'll have all of that good stuff. You know, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25, he talks about Moses. Moses, he said, you know, I chose rather to be mistreated with God's people than to live a sinful life for a short time. You see, he knew that this world has nothing good to offer. And, you know, I always say that he had a vision beyond. You see, one thing that is missing in the body of Christ today is a vision beyond. Where are we going? How are we going to get there? We all say, you know, we can all sing. I, I haven't heard that song for a long time. And, and, and that's sad because that's a song that we should all sing. Because we should all be preparing for eternity with Christ. Because when we prepare for eternity with Christ, then we'll be able to have a better life here on earth in God. Amen? So, first, you know, we believe, we repent after we see the fruits of repentance. You know, one thing that we're going to do now is that we want to see fruits of repentance first before we put anybody under the water. Because the worst thing is this, is that, you know, we ask, are you repented? Yes, you are repented. And then we feel that we have to put people under the water right away. No, no, I want to see the fruits now. I don't want to put anybody under the water until I see some fruits. That you have left the things of the world. Not that you're not going to struggle. We are going to struggle, right? We're not talking about that, but we're talking about that they return back to their vomit. They return back to the life of sin and all of that. And that is not doing a good thing for them. And it's something that we shouldn't encourage. So we have believe, repent. We see the fruits of repentance. Then a person is baptized. They receive the Holy Spirit. Some of them, they receive the baptism of fire. And then they live for him. Then comes the rapture. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm going to give you a 32, 33-week series all in one today. Okay? Because how many know it's not how many times or how long the series is. Just tell it the way it is. So today we're going to tell it the way it is. Okay? So uh, we have the rapture. Uh, some of them believe before the rapture, after the rapture. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, then we have seven years of tribulation. Okay, the seven years of tribulation, that means that I believe that it's coming soon. 
Okay, that's when, when, uh, when the ones that are going to proclaim to be Christians, and if they're not going to deny Christ, their heads will be cut off. So, you know, there's a choice. Either we go in the rapture if we believe in the pre, and, uh, but if we are left behind during the seventh tribulation, I'm more pre-rapture than post-rapture. Okay, because uh, that's the way I believe. So anyway, but some people believe post, so pre-post doesn't matter because we'll find out when it happens. Right? So there's seven years of tribulation, and then for those that were flaking, did not go in the rapture, will stay behind, and all hell will, will break loose, and guess what? All hell will, will focus on you. More than they focus on you now. Now they're focusing in many, but in that hour they will focus on them, and then the pressure will come, there will be nothing hidden. You see, one of the things that are happening today is this, that the devil is not hiding anymore. The devil is coming full flesh out there, hallelujah. We see sin now, we, we see, not, we, we see the, the government, we see leaders, we see mayors, we see cities that are so blind and they're agreeing to something that our parents would uh, die if they saw that. So what happens, we live in the day, we live in a day that, that the world is going to hell, the world, the world is going in deception, the world is going crazy, right? So, uh, I mean, but that's the world that people will be left behind. When they miss the rapture and they are there in the seven years, it won't be an easy thing. And I believe because we, many of them will not be grounded in the word. Many of them, the only foundation they have is religion. Many of them will deny Christ at that hour. Hallelujah, because it won't feel good when you feel a knife trying to cut you off slowly your head. Okay, and you see the, the blood gushing out out of things, because it's not an easy thing. Come on, am I allowed to talk the truth here tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah, is this a message that we need to preach in this hour? Uh, come on, so, so what happens then, we have the seven years of tribulation, then judgment, and, you know, I might, I might miss the order of all of these things, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the order. It means that these things will happen and will take place because the Word of God says so. So then judgment for things that we did and then do. The, world also, the, the Word of God also says, to him that knew much, much will be required. To him that knew much and didn't do anything with it will be beaten with many stripes. Then those that have their names in the book of life will go to heaven. And those whose names are not in the book of life, uh, I'm sorry, but there is no purgatory in between. It's either boom, one way or boom, another way. So either you go up right away or you go down right away. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Well, we'll go to hell. Hell was not created for people. But for the devil and the evil spirits and the demon. So devils, devil, demons, get ready. Because your judgment day is coming. And you're going to spend eternity there in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. They know that that's the word of God. They know where they're going. That's the reason that they're coming out. Hallelujah. As never before, they're coming out of their closets. They're coming out of everywhere that they are. And they're manifesting themselves that they have deceived the, unse the unsaved. The Bible says that the God of this world has blinded the minds of those that believe not. So right now, they are, as they manifest, they are blinded the minds of people. And listen to this. I have some bad news for you. The Bible doesn't say that he will blind the minds of Christians or non-Christians. He says that he will blind the minds of those that believe not, including so-called Christians. Oh, come on. We got to start reading the Bible the way the Bible is written. Amen. Hallelujah. But let's talk about heaven a little bit before. So let's put a little joy before I nail, before the word of God nails you between the eyes and wakes you up and makes you realize that you can live wishy-washy. As I mentioned earlier, you cannot believe in hell and not live according to that, that you know. You cannot do that. 
If you believe in hell, you got to do something about your life. Come on. Billy Graham said once, many of you are waiting for the signs of the end time. Some of you might die tonight. He said the end of the world for you is the moment that you take your last breath and that last breath can be tonight. Oh, hallelujah. And I saw that happen. One lady came to our church in Toronto. Hallelujah. She came, got saved. She went and crossed a street. There was a double street. And as she crossed, a car hit her and she got killed. But thank God she came and gave her life to the Lord and repented and says, I'm going to live for Jesus and everything like that. And God knew that she was going that day. The Lord was taking her, but whatever her story was, God saved her and sent her to paradise with him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So it's good to talk about heaven. He says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If that were not so, I will have told you, but that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to, to be with me, that you also may be there where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. You know, you know the way to the place where I'm going. A lot of people don't know. Revelations. 5, 9 to 13, it says, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll to, the open, to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language, and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign, they will reign on earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering, listen to this, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders in a loud voice that were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power to receive wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Hallelujah. We sang it early, so you were in tune with the Spirit when we sang that one. Hallelujah. Then I heard every creature in heaven. Listen to this. And on earth. Listen. Every creature on heaven, earth, and under the earth, and on the sea, and all that is them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in things of heaven, earth, and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, hallelujah, to the glory of God our Father. The, the question is, where would you be? Will you be under the earth? Will you be on the earth? Will you be with Him? That's the question. Because every tongue shall confess. Every tongue will confess. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm getting excited. Are you excited? Well, you better get excited here because two and three is not excited. Okay, this is a good. I'm just trying to, you know, warm you up before, you know, the word nails you to the wall, right? How many know that we need to be nailed between the eyes to wake us up because we're falling asleep, thinking that there is no hell, thinking that there is no rapture, thinking that we're going to live forever? That's not going to happen. Revelation chapter 7. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where do they come from? I answered, Sir, you know, and he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. 
the sun will not beat down on them. Hallelujah. He says, he says any, you know, any scorching heat that will not be hit. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to a springs of living water. And God will wipe away, will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hallelujah. There will be no more crying, no more sickness, no more evil, no more devil. Hallelujah. We will know all things. Hallelujah. Somebody says, you know, why would a loving God send somebody to hell? The question is not why would a loving God send somebody to hell? Why would a person reject God or choose hell over a loving God? That's the question. Oh, hallelujah. Revelations 21, verses 4 to 8. It says, he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. No more. Or mourning. You will see your mom. Hey, Rose, you will see your mama. I will see my mama. I will see my papa. Hallelujah. I will see all those that have gone before us. Hallelujah. We will see Paul, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Hallelujah. Jacob. Hallelujah. We will see all of them that have made it through. And we have proved that they have made it through. Oh, what a day that will be when we all get to heaven. Hallelujah. What a day that will be when we all see Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Why would anybody, 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 anybody give this up? He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this thing down for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the springs of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this. And I will be their God and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic, arts, idolaters, a lot of idolatry in the house of God. Hallelujah. Idolatry in the house of God is adultery before God. Because God will not put up with any other lover. And all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Revelation 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Just like we did earlier today. Whose names are not written in the book of life. Of the lamb slain from the foundations of the world. Revelation 20 verse 12. And I saw the dead, a small and great, a stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Nothing will be hidden. Anything that is now washed by the blood of the land will be revealed in that hour. And all depends how the test comes through. Then you'll either go there or go down. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for the word of God. Some people saying in their churches right now as they hear this on the radio and as you, well, I'm sure that you know it. But some people are saying, where is all of that in the Bible? Hallelujah. Because they don't hear these things anymore. Hallelujah. Because, because people are afraid. Of telling this off. Hallelujah. So verse uh, 3. Revelations verse 5. He that overcomes. The same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father. And before his angels. So when you come before the father. Jesus will be there. He says. Uh, father. He's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been washed by the blood. Hallelujah. His robes are wide because they've been washed with the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. He's okay. Glory be to God. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hallelujah. So that's when we move to the second step. Hell. 
Is hell real? Well, you have to understand that Jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven. Because, you know, if I, go, I, if I come and talk about heaven, I get a lot of people that hears me. But if I talk about hell, not too many people will hear me. So I guess he had to talk more about hell until it gets through to people that there is a hell. And the Word of God, when he talks about hell, is as good as John 3.16. Come on. How in the world we are going to prepare for eternity, eternity if we don't talk about it? If we prepare for eternity, we will have a better life here on earth. Revelations 21, verse 8. Again, I'll repeat it. By the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic, arts, the idolaters, and liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Matthew 25, verse 46. Then they will go away to eternal punishment by the righteous to eternal life. Mark chapter 9, verse 43. If your hands causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands and go to hell. Where the fire, where the fire, where the fire, where the fire never goes out. I'll repeat that again. You say, is this in the Bible? All oh, you Baptists, all oh, you Pentecostals, all oh, you Lutheran, all oh, you religious, it is in the Bible. There is a heaven, hallelujah, where there will be no more tears, no more, no more sickness, no more evil, no more devil, no more any of that. There will be no darkness, there will be light as streets of gold, all of the good stuff. But there is a hell where the fire never goes out. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus came to save us from sin and to prevent us from going to hell. That's the reason. Jesus came to prevent us from going to hell and to prepare us to be with him forever. There is a huge sin in the body of Christ today from pulpits down. Come on. There is a huge sin, S-I-N. S-I-N is a disobedience to Almighty God. And what is that S-I-N? Is that we are failing to warn people where they're going after this life is over. Hallelujah. They don't want to warn us. They don't want to prepare us for it. Hallelujah. Death is something that we will all approach. The question is, how are we going to die? And how we will leave this earth? We take insurance for death. We take insurance for our loved ones to have some funds when, when we go away. But have we taken insurance for the afterlife? Are we insured? Do you have your ticket and your confirmation? Oh, hallelujah. Come on. The foolish steward, he never did much with what God gave him. His sentence was, the little that he had was taken away and was sent to hell. Come on. Is it okay if I read the Bible? Yeah. You know, I have not really, I have about 5% is words, everything else is Bible. Oh, hallelujah. So, I, I, it was too much to, to uh, copy-paste over there. So, I'm going to have to, uh, and I don't even know what these books are. I never memorized them. You know, if I went to Santa School today and they told me to tell you all the books of the Bible, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. But I know who the Holy Spirit is. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'll read him from Luke 16. Okay, let me read a little bit of Luke 16. 
I'll read a few verses there. It says, Now Jesus was also saying to the disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a manager of his state, and accusations against this man were brought to him, that this man was squirting, uh, having an you know, argument there, his mas about his possessions. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an accounting of your management of my affairs, uh, for you can no longer be manager. The manager of the state said to himself, What would I do since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not strong enough to dig for a living, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I will do, so that when I'm removed from the management people, who are my master's debtors, will welcome me into their homes. So he summoned his master's debtors one by one, and he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of olive uh, of oil and he said to him take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50 then he said to the other and how much do you owe he said a hundred measures of wheat then he said to him take your bill and write 80 then his master commended the unjust manager not for his misdeeds but because he had acted bad by preparing for his future and employment for the sons of his day, of this age, the non-believers are shrewder in relation to their own kind, that is, to the ways of the secular world that are the sons of, of light, the believers. And I tell you, learn from this, make friends for yourself for eternity. By means of the wealth and unrighteousness, that is, use material resources as a way to further the work of God. So that when he runs out, they will welcome you, the eternal dwelling. He who is faithful is a very little thing, is also faithful in much. And he who is dishonest in very little things is also dishonest, dishonest in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the use of earthly wealth, who will entrust you the true riches to you? And if you have not been faithful in the use of that earthly wealth, which belongs to another, whether God or men, and of which you are a, a trustee, who will give you that which is your own? No, servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand devotely to, uh, by the one and despise the other. You can now serve God and mammon, that is your earthly possession or anything else you trust, in and rely on instead of God. Okay? Revelations, uh, when you go home, read 20, verses 11 to 16. You see, God loves everybody. But he doesn't love many of the things that people do. You know, the saying is this, you know, God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. Right? So we must be preparing for the afterlife, not just here. When we prepare for the afterlife, we will then live a life, blessed life. And, uh, and if you're afraid to preach about hell, you know, and this is, you know, the message that I like to tell the pastors is, if you're afraid to preach about hell, go and get a job. Because you will be judged for not warning the people about the afterlife. And can I say something else that the Holy Spirit has put in my heart? A lot of our pulpits are not full of pastors or leaders that been called to the ministry. The problem of our nation today, the problem of the world today, is that many of those that are stand behind a pulpit, many of them have not been called of God. That's scary. Because you see, you see, gifts are without repentance. Some preachers, they stand, they start well. They do have the anointing of the Lord. But then somehow they get distracted by the wealth of this world. 
And then they embrace other gospels. And then when they embrace other gospel, the love for the lost is no longer part of that gospel. Then over the years, I don't know if you, I don't know how old you are, but for many years we had a lot of so-called preachers that were exposed and they were, you know, they were, they were arrested and all of that because they were, they were there just to collect money. There were good salespeople in the, in, the, in the world, and they say, wow, look at these people. They're getting a lot of money. So what we're going to do, we're going to study the bit of the Bible, give them a message, give them all the, all the goosebumps and all of these things, and let's collect money. And a lot of them were phony. And a lot of them deceive many people. Okay? So, Jesus came to save us from sin. To prevent us from going to hell. To prepare us to be with him forever. We will all approach death. And as we talked about it. Hell is real. And I don't want to go on reading and, uh, some scary stuff. But hell is scary. Hell. You know, I want everybody you know, to, to read about hell. Because hell is real. And there, if you believe in heaven, well, there is a hell. If you believe in God, there is a devil. If you believe in devil, there is a hell. Prepare for the devil. Oh, hallelujah. And then the rapture comes. The rapture. Because the rapture, most of the signs for the rapture have already been fulfilled. I believe, you know, many believe that we are living in overtime. We're living in the grace period. Where God is allowing Canada, allowing North America, allowing people to understand that the goodness of the Lord should lead men to repentance. But instead, the goodness of the Lord have, have made them spoil. There is no fear of God anymore. Anything upsets them. Come on. I dealt with somebody just last week. It was a hymn. And, uh, you know, they asked me for advice. And the advice was not agreeing with his way of thinking. And he got mad at me. You know, see, everybody has their way of thinking. Amen? The only thinking that we have is the mind of Christ, and the mind of Christ is the Word of God, and the Word of God is the life that we need. Amen? Amen. So, you know, we have to understand that in the rapture, He's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. Death can be any time for us. I can drive the car today. A truck can go run me over and I can just go. It's good to be ready. I know a friend of mine and I shared the story a long time ago, but I feel to share it again Father and son go fishing, the boat tilts, and the waters were, uh, he knows him too, and uh, the waters were rough, and there was only room for one person to survive. And this was a last-minute decision that, that the father and the son, they had to make as they, they're holding in, in the, 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 the boat. And, and, and then the father says to him, son, I am ready. But you have a life ahead of you. Please let me go. No, Father. Let's keep trying. Maybe help will come. He says, help is not coming, son. We only have a few minutes. And we have to make a choice. And then the son accepted. They said their goodbyes. And the father raised his hands to his Savior. And he went under the water and died. He was ready. There was no rapture for him. There was no hell for him. There was an early call and a decision that he had to make. And he made the right choice. Oh, hallelujah. Are we ready? If we're placing the situation, are you ready? Is Jesus happy with our lives? The way we have, we have used the, the resources that he's given us and the blessings that he has. 
You know, that's why I'm totally against sending missionaries to other countries. I don't mind sending money to other countries to help them out because it's, or, or to, for them to come and for us to train them maybe and whatever. I don't know. I, we can train them. We can train them in building our own kingdom, but we can't train them in winning a city for God. How can we go to other countries when other countries have more of God than we do? How can we help other countries when our country is not broken enough to have the fullness of God. I believe that if Jesus came today and the world was ended, I would think there will be nor more North Americans in hell than any other country on the face of this earth. That's a true fact. Hallelujah. But the point is now those outside of this country or those in our, in our country, but the point it is, what about your life? Will God say, come good and faithful servant? Or will he say, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 said, listen, I tell you a, mis a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash. Say in a flash. The rapture can come right now. Amen. Some will go, some will stay. Hopefully everybody will go in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed, for the perishable must be clothed itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immorality. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive... And our left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with his words. Luke 17, 34, I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken and the other one will be left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken, another left. Where, Lord? They ask. He replied, Where there is a dead body, there will be vultures, where the vultures will gather. Revelation 20. He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw them into the abbeys, into hell, and locked and sealed him, and seal it over him to keep him from deceiving. Say deceiving. So he's keeping them, keeping him from what? Okay. From deceiving the nations anymore. So what is happening right now? That the devil is loose. He's deceiving nations. And, he's, he's, and if he's able to deceive nations, he's able to deceive one person. Come on. So he, to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the, ten, until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. And I saw thrones in which were seated those who have been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who have been beheaded. Beheaded. Okay. Because of what? Of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image. And had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. All of the mark is already in the world today. 666, one world currency. All of the things that the Bible talks about is in the world today. The world is ready for the end time. The world is ready for the Antichrist. And there is so much deception in the world today where there is Christians deceive, preachers deceive, Pulp is disease, leadership disease, governments disease, because the devil 
knows that his days are numbered. Come on. So they had not worshipped the beast or the image and have not received the mark. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. You see, I'm getting ready for, to reign with him for a thousand years. There is a lot of work to be done over there. So I can't go unclean. I can't go unprepared. I have to prepare myself. And this is a revelation that, I, that came to my mind. To have the full blessing of God upon your life. You must go all out for him. His full blessing will never come to your life until you belong to him 100%. Jesus was walking with his disciples and he burst their balloons. They were all happy that they were walking with Christ, the one that was healing the sick and casting out devils and doing miracles and all of that. And he spoiled it to them. He says, guys, you must hate everybody. Your mom, your dad, your this and that. In order for you to be fit to be my disciple. So you see, there is a cost. There is a huge requirement in our part. Part of the Bible says that is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. Not in a terrible way, but it's a terrible way for the flesh in our lives and, and for us to grow spiritually in him and to understand that we are not of this world, that we're just passing through this world, that our kingdom is not the kingdom of this world, but the kingdom is where kingdom of God. That's where we belong. Come on. Then they came to life, I'm almost done, and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the, the first resurrection. Uh, Revelation 11, it says the seventh trumpet. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord, of his Messiah. And he will reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who were seated on the thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead for, and for rewarding your servants, the prophets, your people who revere your name, both great and small, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within the, his temple was seen the Ark of the Covenant, and there came flashes of lightning, rumbling, peals of thunder, an earthquake and severe hailstorm. The Bible says, and I close, do not fear what earth can do to you, but fear God who can kill the body and send a soul to hell. To hell. There is no second chance Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Many will call upon his name and he will say, I never knew you. Depart from me. If we believe in hell, why do we live as if hell was not real? Oh, hallelujah. 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 So sad to know that many people in churches today will not make it to heaven. And if you believe what we talked about tonight, it is our duty to warn people about what's to come. Amen. Because the, 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 the hero came that came by the other day 
could have cost the lives of thousands. And that could be religious people that can be children of God. God has spared us one more time in this region. But our day can be today, it could be tomorrow. So I don't know about you, but I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Hallelujah. The cross before us, the world behind us. No turning back, no turning back. Oh, hallelujah. Do not go with me. This is the key for the hour that we live in. Do not go with me. Still, I will follow. Will you follow him if, do non, if no one goes with you? And I'll say to this to you and to the radio. Your love for God is based upon how much you obey Him. Period. You want to know how much you love Jesus? Search your life and see how much you obey Him. If you obey him 80%, you don't love Jesus. If you, if you obey him 70%, you don't love Jesus. I believe that we can love him 95%, and I give 5% for tripping sins and things that we have to go through, because as long as we're on this earth, there's still things that need to be worked out. Right? So that's what I call tripping sin. The Bible says to walk even as Jesus walked. And the Bible says, what's the scripture? It says, it's a favorite one of mine, where he says that if we sin, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, oh no, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, so that means that we're, we're one in Jesus. We, we go in all out for him. So if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So then I said to God, why do we need the blood when we walk in the light? And that's when he says we'll have tripping sin. That means you lose your temper with your spouse. You'll be mad at somebody for a little while or whatever. I don't know. Those are tripping sin where you trip and you sin and you say, oh, I shouldn't have done so. So that's why I said that if you love him, a high percentage, and you have that little room for whatever else God is doing in your life, that's true love. Okay? Because I don't think that as long as we, we see each other, I don't think that we'll be obeying him 100%. The flesh... You know, the Bible says, though the outer man perishes, the inner man is renewed day by day. So I give that small percentage to that scripture that we die daily, we pick up the cross daily. So if we have to die daily and pick up the cross daily, so that means that there is a small percentage for unwilling sin. The problem is, is that when we have willing sin, then there is no God. Sin separates us, right? And according to some of the scriptures that I mentioned today, you will probably go and stay in the seven years of tribulation and be tortured until your head is cut off. And the flames of hell will burn forever and ever. But God has prepared a place for us. Heaven. A place to be with him forever and ever. So let us all prepare for eternity with him. And not give in to the temptations of this world and to the lust of this world. And that's the reason that the message next week is so vital. Because... The Holy Spirit is going to speak a prophetic word, a word that will rock the, soap, the, the, the socks out of churches, even in this region. 
because money has become the God of many churches today. And God is about to wipe out all money from those churches. Oh, hallelujah. Till they repent and come back and preach the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To repent, to turn away from their wicked ways. Then God will hear and then God will heal our land. Father God, thank you for your word. I pray, God, that the hearers tonight here and those over the radio, I pray, God, that even though they haven't heard this for a long time, and even many Christians will say, Hooray, hooray, somebody's preaching about hell. But are they preaching about hell? Are they warning people of the afterlife, what could be? For there, as Ezekiel says, that if we don't warn people of what's to come and warn them of their sins, their blood will be required at our hands. Their blood, our hands, will be bloody with their blood. So, Lord, I pray that you will have mercy upon this region. Have mercy upon our homes and our families. Have mercy because heaven is real, hell is real, and the rapture is about to take place. You're coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle, a church that is walking in the way of holiness. For your word says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Wow, what a truth. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And, uh, you know, and, that, and that's one thing that, you know, we got, we got to look at all the scriptures of the Bible. I mean, what a, what a message, I tell you. You know, and, and one of the statements here is this, is that a lot of people believe in hell. And the question is, if we believe in hell... Why are we living as hell was not real? I mean, if there is a, if there is two places to go, the Bible says that you know narrow is the way that leads to life, and the broad way is the one that leads to destruction, to hell. So, if we know all of these scriptures, you see, Jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven, for a reason, because he came to save us from our sin and to prevent us from going to hell because hell was not created for people. It was created for the devil. That's where he's going to be for eternity. And the, and the evil spirits and the demons and all of that, they're going to go there. But because people choose to reject God and choose a sinful life, then that's where they're going to go, unfortunately. And we see it right in the Bible. The Bible talks about that people were in hell. You know, and it was not a nice place to be. And a lot of people over the centuries, they have shared their vision and their testimony of what happened when they were taken to hell and shown hell. And they came back with that. And, you know, and, and, even, and even the Word of God says that even if somebody returns from the dead, because they ask him, they say, oh, let somebody return from the dead so that we can warn them that the hell is real. And I said, that's not going to do it. Jesus Christ came back from the dead. <laughs> and told us this thing, and have we listened? Of course not. A small percentage of the world knows about God. A small, a small percentage of Canada know about God. A small percentage of, uh, a small percentage of, of our region know about God. But is that helping us? No, because it's, it's just a small percentage. And how come it's a small percentage? Because we're choosing to live our way, not God's way. You know, that's why I started this whole teaching on the scripture on uh, Hebrews 11.25 when he says that Moses chose rather to be mistreated with God's people than to live a sinful life for a short time. That means that he had a vision beyond, you see, and we ought to be preparing for that afterlife. And, and, and we cannot prepare for the afterlife is that all we hear is about this life. 
You see, preparing for this life will not prepare us for the afterlife. When we prepare for the afterlife, then we eat, that will help us prepare for this life. Because when, you, when you're preparing for the afterlife, you're going to prepare, okay, there is a heaven. That's wonderful. Everybody, you know, but there is a way how to get into heaven. Not everybody is going to go to heaven according to the Word of God. If you live for God and if you do everything that God wants you to do and, 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 and accept the preventions that he's placed in the Word of God to prevent us from going to hell, then, then that's good because then we'll have the rapture. The rapture, he's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. That means that they're living for him. They're not living for themselves. And then after that, I believe in the pre-rapture, but whether we believe in the pre-rapture or post-rapture, we have to understand that there is seven years of tribulation where those that have not made it in the rapture or will not make it to the rapture, they will be forced to deny Christ. And if they deny Christ, then they're part of the evil and they will go where the devil goes. And if they don't deny Christ, then their heads will be cut, will be, will be cut off. And that's one of the scriptures that I share in this teaching, that the, 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 those that were beheaded, their robes were washed as white as snow. Those that were beheaded, so that means that there is a group uh, of people, doesn't say the amount, the group of people that were beheaded and they made it into heaven, right? So then you have the thousand years of reigning with Christ. You have the judgment, the first resurrection, the second resurrection, the, the judgment uh, of Christ. I mean, you know, there is a lot of steps that a lot of people in the church today, and this is what concerns me, is that a lot of people in the church don't have a clue about the afterlife. They only say, okay, we're going to heaven, and, and, and they don't even know much about heaven. Then they say, well, yeah, I probably believe in hell. And some people say, I don't believe in hell. And a lot of people say, hell here is what we see here on earth. No. I mean, but you have to understand, whether you believe in hell or not, hell is real. Okay? And, and, and our job as Christians is to warn people about that there is a heaven, that there is a hell and there is a rapture coming. I met with a fellow just recently this week, and he looked at me concerned. And he looked at me and he says, Brother John, is there really a rapture? When is a rapture going to take place? I says, it can be taking place today because all has been fulfilled according to the rapture, and it can happen any time. And as I mentioned in the, in the recording here, is that the rapture, we're living in, in overtime time. We live in the mercies of God. God is allowing us to repent from our ways, to live for Him, to search the Scripture. And the saddest thing is this, is that pulpits across this nation are afraid to preach about hell. They're afraid to warn us about what's to come. The reason is, is because they don't want to rock the giving of the church. They don't want to rock the finances of the church. Because if we start preaching against sin, if we start preaching the same way that Jesus preached, you know, the good news, the good news is this, is that, hey, God loves you. God came to, uh, to uh, forgive your sins. He paid the price for that. He's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And if you repent and all of that, so then there is a repentance. Then we live in the fruits of repentance. So that means that our lives are transformed by the Word of God and we live for Him, not for ourselves. And then we're willing to die for Him as the disciples did. But, you know, but we're afraid to preach against sin because maybe the, bigger, the biggest givers of, of the church might be in sin. And we don't want to preach about hell because it might scare people around. Listen, there is enough things out there in the world that it scares us. Okay, there is sin, there is evil. All of this attack against our education, our young people, and all of that is there. So listen, I'm warning everybody. The rapture can be happening today. Are you ready for the rapture? Because without holiness, you won't see him. Number two, are you ready? Do you know anything about hell? And I say, are you ready to prevent your life from going to hell? And if you're not, listen, if it's preacher your church or not, you better get into the word of God and make sure that you, wa you walk on your, on your toes for the rest of your life here because hell is real. And it's not the plan of God for you to go to hell. But if you choose to reject them, I mean, that's where you're going.
You know, he says, you know, why would a loving God send someone to hell? But not, that's another question. Why would we choose hell over a loving God? Anyway, this is Brother John from Revival Iowa. And remember, we are fighting for you and we love you. We love you enough to tell you the truth. Bye for now.